Hi, my name is Tom Mason. I'm a professional wildlife and nature photographer. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about the lenses I use to get shots like this. When it comes to working with wildlife, wide angle lenses aren't always going to be the choice for the subject you're working with. Often, you're going to need something longer. Something over 200 millimeters is really going to help you fill the frame with the subject that's out in the field. Now, the difference when you're working with long lenses is you're going to have the choice between a prime lens and a zoom lens. Zoom lenses are going to give you a great option, flexibility in your composition, that means you can create a range of shots from a static position. A prime lens, on the other hand, is going to give you a greater focal length, a better aperture, and also the overall sharpness and quality is probably going to be improved. So if I'm going on a trip, my standard setup has to, has to cover a range of things. Firstly, I need to make sure that I can fill the frame with my subject, but also I can get those in the landscape shots, the, the more pulled back approach. So that means when I'm setting up the focal lengths I'm going to take on a wide coverage uh, to maximise my photographic opportunities. So standardly, I'd probably take something like an 80 to 400, more preferably a 70 to 200 mil lens uh, to do my kind of middle distance telephoto. And then I'd pair that with my long lens of choice, be it a 300 millimeter with a teleconverter or the 500 prime if I'm gonna work in the UK. But really it's just to give me a good spread so I can maximize the shots I'm working with. So sharpness is really important for wildlife because you want to see every hair and detail, uh, well, on a hair, for example. You know, you want it to really stand out from the background, especially if you're working with shallow depth of field, because you want out of focus and then pin sharp to really give that maximized kind of impact from every single frame. So one of the coolest features about the professional lenses are the buttons at the front. You can set them up in a variety of ways for a selection of features. Um, you can use it to autofocus the lens, but my preference is, is to use the memory set feature. It's great. Um, I'm usually out with a specific image in mind, a shot that I want. So I'll frame it up, lock the focus, set the memory so that my camera remembers where it is. And then through the rest of the day, I can photograph in other locations, other bits. But as soon as my subject drops back to where I want it, I simply turn the camera, press the button, and my shot's composed, focused, and exactly where I want it. The thing about working with lower shutter speeds is, is the fact that not only can you get sharper shots when the light starts to get a bit lower, you can up your ISO, of course, to get a higher shutter speed, but sometimes you want something a bit more creative. You want to work with a panning shot, and you want to use a long lens to do that, so you still get the depth of field characteristics, but also get a bit of movement into frame. Movement always looks lovely um, on a subject. It makes a more impression that the thing's alive, because you know if all subjects were just flat, and still, it doesn't really show the natural world in the way that we always want to present it. Of course, opportunities of, as a photographer are here all year. This same field hosts a number of species through, throughout the seasons. I can work with geese in the winter, hares in the spring. You know, it's a great place to be. The lenses have to perform whatever the weather. I don't want to be sitting at home waiting for the conditions to be right for my lens. I want the conditions to be right for my subject. When I started off, obviously, early lower end gear, it, it just takes that it just doesn't perform as well in, in poor conditions. Grit gets in the lenses because things move, they're not all internal focusing and movements. Um, and that means that when you come home, you've got to spend ages cleaning them out to know that it's going to perform as well the next day. Moving on, as I kind of went up, the pro end lenses, you know, the performance, the, the weatherproofing, it means that you can go out in poor conditions, in the rain, in snow, whatever, and you can be sure that you're going to get the shots and the lens will perform day after day after day. Of course, there's little things you can do. Of course, you know, you can throw a cover over it. You can use this to get a load of water off the lens. It keeps it dry. But if I've been out in the field and there's a hair in front of me, the moment I take this over my, out of my bag and put it on top, I've scared my subject away. And that just means that I've lost an opportunity to make a picture. Whereas the pro level lens means I can stay for five minutes longer and get the shot I'm after before kind of preparing everything up to stay out in the rain.